and kindly have your seat in his presence. In the name of Jesus, we started um, a series two weeks ago, themed broken. And um, the Lord has been speaking to us and we clearly said this is not preaching, is not teaching, is we're going deep in, in the word of God, how it applies to our lives and how the word of God has the power to heal, the power to heal. So it's a healing service. Hallelujah. The word has the power to heal. It has the power to go to the foundations, to look for the roots of things that we face and things that most times never spoken publicly, never addressed. I'm believing God that God has started a healing process in someone's life and they will complete it in Jesus' name. Continuing from where we stopped, we, we picked from the story that Jesus gave about the Good Samaritan and how the man ran into the hand of ham robbers and um, they dealt with him, stripped him of his garment and we said he was wounded. And not only physically was wounded by people he expected would help him. The priest came, you know, the religious people came, they saw him, and they passed him by. So he, we landed in, 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 in what we call rejection. One of, the, one of the things that break people we spoke about rejection. And I think Part of the areas I, I would like us to, to dwell on is signs of signs that rejection produces. There are things in our lives that even though we are unable to pinpoint it, but it strays from experiences we've had in our past. So we, 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 one, of the, one of the ones I will talk about is when people that are hurt and, and somehow they refuse to be comforted. They refuse to be comforted. They have, they are, they, they've twisted back that love isn't good. It's, it's, it's difficult for them to receive love or to receive care. When anyone comes and is showing them some kind of love that they, are, they, they believe they don't deserve, it flags, it flags something within them. They, they can't accept it. And people who feel rejection, we said most times need time. So this is a process. It, it takes time. It's not something, it's, it's, not like, it's, it's not like touch and go. Amen? It's not like maybe uh, a pain in your body just boom. In Jesus' name, go. And the pain just disappears. It's deeper than that. Because it, it, it affects the soul of a man. And when he stays... Too long in the soul, it, it affects the spirit of the man. And when the Bible teaches about salvation, it spoke about salvation as the spiritual aspect. You can confess your sins. You can accept Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior. And you are saved. In the spirit, your spirit is saved. But the Bible tells us that when it comes to the soul of a man, it says, a man shall renew his, his soul, his mind. It is a continuous process. Now the Bible talks about faith. It says, it's a faith coming by hearing and hearing. Because every water that comes, it washes something away. But it's still something, something, something more. It washes away. Sometimes it might be, it might, it might be offense. It washes away. Sometimes it might be strife. 
Somebody, sometimes it might be, it might be self-pity. It might be vengeance. It might be bitterness. So there's so many things that, that when you are wounded, expression comes in different ways. And it's not just one thing that changes everything. So, say it's a process. Say, say, say it's a process. Say it's a process. Most times when people are very sensitive, that anything you, and they're very so touchy, that you have, I mean, you have to tiptoe around them. Most times, they are, they are hurting and they've been wounded. Whenever there's anyone that you have to be careful that you don't say the wrong thing, you can, if you crack a joke and that joke it wasn't well processed, this atomic bomb can explode. It, that means the person is, is going through a process. It's not that the person is mean. No. There's something in that person's life that the person is hurting in that area. And you, even, when you do, even when the alarm blows and you don't even know what you said, all you can say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Say, what are you sorry for? You don't know what you're saying, but I'm just sorry because this wala is beyond what you can't, pre, you can't really pinpoint. What did I say? Why? The, that person isn't what you said. Is that there's, there's something in the person's life that he or she has not yet dealt with or allowed God to reach out and to heal. They easily get irritated. And some of them, some of the attributes is that they, when people get extremely stubborn, you know that kind of stubborn that if, so if ex, except God himself comes down <laughs> I say, my daughter, my son. <laughs> if they've locked their mind, I will do this. Quote all the Bible. Use Isaiah, Jeremiah. Use uh, history of accounts. They will never change their mind. Why? They are fighting to hold the ground. There is something behind it. There's what? There's something. They won't want to lose the battle. Stubborn. To change their mind, you will sweat. There's nothing wrong is that that person, and if you are, if, 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 if what I'm analyzing, if you, are ex, if you are exhibiting any of them, it's only telling you that that thing that you thought you have overcome, it's just on, um, what do you call it? Is it auto drive or what? You know, not sometimes when you put, somebody's walking, you put it on, um, on sleep mode. You know? It's there, but it's just uh, sleeping. You know, sometimes they, they say, English, they say, let the sleeping dog lie. It's not there, though. If you mistakenly step on the tail, then you know that. It was the dog was just sleeping. Another thing that you, you take note is that someone people that exhibit ag aggression, aggressive, so they ex aggressive, just ah. you, you want to say, ah, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, you know, calm down. And sometimes it, it gets to anger. They're easily angry and very aggressive. Most of them, it works in two sides. So if I say this, I just say they're a pastor. When a woman wants to be like a man, you know, if a man can do it, they want to challenge the same thing. Ah, there's something. And same thing for the, for the men. There is, when you are excessively, you want to prove something. And some, if you offend them, 
except you move to Mars, they must pay back. They must do what? <laughs> even if you have, even if you have begged for streets until they pay you back, that matter is not settled. There is, it's beyond that. There is, there is, there's, there's a inner anger. There are things that they are fighting for. So, I'm giving you broad, broad aspects of what, when someone is wounded at, because based on what we discussed last week, as a child, as a teenager, as a young adult, all the different aspects of things that can, that can wound a person. When you, have, when you have crossed that line, you, you exhibit one of these things. And, and, and not only we do people or do we have rejection, sometimes it, 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 it's manifested in what I call self-rejection. Self-rejection. And self-rejection can, it can, it can show, it can come out like low self-esteem. You're not good enough. You just don't have confidence in yourself. You, if, 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 you're, if you're told, and, 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 and I've, I've seen it happen many times, they send a call to your office or to your, to your team. And they said, ah, the, the member is looking to promote someone in this office to, in your group to make the, to make the, um, the head of the team. It's going to be a, a new team head. I've seen many times the, the person that is most qualified will point to this next person. Ah. I say, ah, why not you? I say, no, no, I ah, don't do it. What about you? But you are there now. It's okay. Okay. But say, okay. Uh, let pick another person. Pick the. Uh, but what about yourself? Aren't you qualified? If do you think if they ask that one, it will point to you that you should be the one. Uh, present yourself. Oh ha! Why? They can't see themselves. Experience. Or see themselves be the chosen one. They can't. You have to tell them, you can do it. It can be you. They are struggling. They are struggling. And sometimes, some, some struggle to accept blessing. They struggle to accept it. Why? Because they have low Self-esteem. Sometimes when someone is broken, one of the things that is stolen from that person is the, is the person's self-worth. And if you are either a woman or a man and you, and you have been robbed of your self-worth, you, it, it will affect your relationship constantly. If a man has lost his self-worth, even when he's married, if his wife's phone rings, he wants to know who's calling. If the wife is unlucky that the friend, you know, you know, know there's some names that is unisex, then trouble has started. So, it's my colleague. Why is your colleague calling you at this time? We're just in... Ah, say, the, uh, Bolaji? Bolaji? Which bo Bolaji is it? Why is a girl? No! Which girl is Bolaji? <laughs> Why? He, he's not secured in himself. And that means the woman has to battle with that. A life. You have to keep saying, I, I, I love you, I'm... You say it again and again. Why? The person does not have self-confidence. Self-confidence. Feeling inferior. 
and insecure. There's some people, if you, even if they, read, if, if they give, give them a line and they've read it over and over again, if you say, come outside, and they're reciting, 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 they stand before people who are to disappear. You all go blank, like white board. Why? Even the way they, even the way, even, even, even if they, even if they are lying, they, they'll miss lines. If someone says, ah, but you're good. Ah, you're very good. You're very good. Ah, you can do it. Help the person, package the person to and um, push the person. Say, ah, say, hey, are you sure? Okay, I can say, yeah, you can do it. If the person gets there, as long as the person does not have self-worth and feels insecure, is the battle. That's why I'm praying for someone today. Whatever has been stolen in your life in the, from your years back, I pray that the Almighty will restore it. In the name of Jesus. See, one of the, one of the main things of the Bible is to restore Say restore. restore. Say it again. Restore. See, the Bible says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. See, but I've come to give you life. And that life in abundance. That's why one of the, one of the anchor scriptures that establish our faith, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only because his son that whosoever believed in him. See, why is that scripture so fundamental? Is trying to let you know that you are precious and that you are valuable. See, he gives, for you to understand, a man that has only one son, that's all he has now. So if he can give all he has for you, he's trying to explain to you that you are, you are so priceless. So no matter what you have gone through before, no matter your, your, your self-esteem that has been battered, kicked, is saying to you that he loves you despite them all and that you are still valuable. Why? He's, he's, he's restoring your self-confidence. Restoring your self-worth. Hallelujah. He says you are the apple of my eyes. So if someone had looked at you and eased at you, said nothing will come out of you. He's saying that you are a royal priesthood. See, if you go through scriptures, the aim of scriptures is for you to rise and chest out. Hallelujah. No matter what the word is saying, to believe the, the word of your father, which is more superior, say he has come to restore dignity, self-esteem, when people start feeling inadequate, is a, is they, are, they are the symptoms of where someone is being wounded. And this thing I'm saying, sometimes you might say, say, why am I emphasizing on the things, on the symptoms? Why? Because the moment you know the symptoms, it makes you more sensitive. It makes you more sensitive. If you have a child that before has been confident and suddenly begins to, you know, lose himself or her self-confidence, when you, when you have a child that feels I can do it and next thing is he can't do it, she can't do anything again. I can't do it. Say, try it. I know I can't do it. You, you, you need, it's a flag. Am I saying something? Am I talking to someone? It's what? A flag. So you need to know the symptoms when something is getting wrong and be, and be proactive about it. Be proactive about it. See, it, when, I, when I list all these things, you know, I'll, okay, I'll say it again. I said last week Sunday, last week Tuesday, that please, if you have a story, send it. Because beyond all this, 
I want you to know that it is real. And your story is able to heal someone. And God wants to use your story to be able to heal you. I, I mean, some people have responded. But I'll just take time. I'll, I'll, I'll share one. And I want to give you a, an assurance that any story, so f- number one, everyone, everyone that has said a story, let's first clap for them. <laughs> number one, your identity is kept clean. Number two is a sign that your healing has started. Yes. It's one of the first signs. It's, it, takes, it takes courage. It takes courage and boldness to speak of where you have been wounded. Amen? So I'll, I'll, I'll just, you know, because this sister story is just a clear confirmation of different things that we've been talking about. She starts her story and, and says that she was in primary four. She said she was in primary four and she was eight years old. When her dad's brother, that dad's love very well, started living in the house. And when the dad goes out, the uncle will call her at eight years old and say that she, she should sit on his laps. But, of course, she doesn't understand what it meant at that age. And if when she says no, he will use stick and beat her until he forces her to touch him in his private parts and things like that. And he says she will keep fight and struggle. He says she will, she will, the person, uncle say he, she, he, she stubborn beat her. And because the father loves the uncle so much and she knows that they are very close, he's told that if you dare tell anyone, I will kill you. So she zipped her mouth and was battling with it. She said something in this, she said something, she said before then that she was always top of her class. Before this started, she was top of her class. The next thing she discovered that she can't, she couldn't, she couldn't, she couldn't focus anymore. Her grades started going down. When it's time to go home, she'll be crying because she just wants to go home. She wants to stay, she wants to stay um, in school. And so when her grades started going down, her father said that she's not serious. And she's being stubborn. So from, from her experience, suddenly something happened in her. Is that because she said she had to fight? She had to fight. So suddenly she discovered that she's not becoming, you know, she has to fight for everything. She became a rebellion. You say yes, you say no. You say come, she say I'm not coming. Why? Is the out is, is the effect of abuse, of abuse, and because abuse, as the same same way, is physical. It's also spiritual. Because in her story, she said, after she was able to survive that period, then there arose another man in the neighborhood. All in, 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 in her story. Another man in, a, in the neighborhood that was doing the same to some people there. And that one saw her and tried to jump and continue to harass her. So she, into her, in her story, she feels, because she said this so many times, like I can, say, I can, like I can hear her voice, like, like I'm, like she's jinxed, that kind of thing. Like there's something wrong with her. First thing I want you to know is that when you find yourself or you have experienced something like this, the first thing I'll say it again, it's not your fault. It's not who? Not your fault. Never take responsibility for someone else's evil. Don't see, because one thing that happens is that you start feeling that I like, because now when uncle tried to do her, neighbor tried to do her, according to the story, by the time she even went to, got to um, 
secondary school said one boy in her school too started chasing her. And because she didn't agree, started calling her names. So it's like every stage of her life, men are trying to take advantage of her. So you can easily just say, okay, is it, is it only me? First person, second person, that means something is wrong with me. In her story, as I was reading her story, it got to the part, she said she almost, she almost became a lesbian because she hated men. She hated men and has no, no knowledge of what love is. Our story, this is not, I'm not, the story is here, I'm reading, I'm, I'm just trying to paraphrase different things that's happened. And see, one of the things is that it gets to a certain stage, she started looking for love. She started looking for love because she has never been loved. Or her experience of men is abuse. And there's, there's, and there's another part there. Is a part of guilt. Maybe I'm the one that is tempting them. Maybe I'm the one that caused it. Number one, as I said, it's not who your fault. Say it's not my fault. If, if you have been wrongly abused, wrongly treated, you have been, someone has said nasty things against you, don't accept it that it is your fault. Then number two, don't be guilty of the crime you didn't commit. Don't be guilty. The, the next thing is the enemy will start telling you, you are you, are, you don't have value. You are, you are, you are loose. You are, you are this, you are that. And if you're not careful, you will accept it. And see, it's when you accept things like that that robs you of your self-esteem. Someone like that, there's no how that should, should be confident. Except you, you, you have to renew your mind. I know that it is not me, it's their fault. If anyone is to be guilty, they are the guilty one. And I will not take the burden of what they have done wrong to me. Then the next thing is that, see, I've studied and I've noticed that, see, when people wrong you and you refuse to, 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 to cut off the, the energy of, of the pain. Because as long as, see, when we're listing the things that is attributed to people that um, are rejected or have been abused, that they want vengeance. They are angry. They are stubborn. The moment you are still holding on the things that have been done against you, you always want to pay back. They will always be your, the center of your life. Which means everything you are doing will be centered against them. If it's your, if it's your father wrongs you, every decision you are making in life is to prove a point to him that you are, that you are better. Are you, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you want to do something that he will see and say, ah, I'm sorry. So everything, your decisions, your dreams, your ambition is all centered on the energy of the person that has wronged you. Whereas God's plan for your life is completely different. God wants you to release the person and so that you can go in the direction he has given to you. Whereby you can, you can truly serve God and love God. And the love of God is what will make you love others. Most times, most times, when you refuse to release the person and forgive the person, that unforgiveness will, 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 will establish a, a lifestyle. Or well, maybe you start with them, a habit. Maybe if I say no, 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 no. From that no, 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 it becomes your lifestyle. Any, anything, you become, an, you become a critic. You, you are... You can... Anything, you, 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 you will be rebellious. 
So you will know. Before you know it, the very things that were done to you, you will see yourself doing it to, to others. Doing it to others. They, had, they, they did a research in America some years back, and they discovered that almost 80 to 90% of the young boys that got themselves into violence, drugs, and found themselves in prison, they discovered that almost 80 to 90% of them were boys from single homes that their father left. Their father left them. So they, 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 they were angry and they hate. They hate. That anger is what, they, is what they fell on, on their gang violence. So if, if they meet someone, they want to beat the person. See, the, the, the devil just bring the picture of their father. The person say, help, okay, I'm, I'm, okay, I'll surrender. They, will, they, will, they, will, they can smash the head. Why? Because they are, they, are, they are being filled with fury. They are hot. And they are looking for how to, to express, to disperse that anger. And that it pushes them to violence. If you refuse to forgive and to let the person go, you will, you will find that something will lock you to, be, to repeat what was done to you. I remember for those, I, I, I didn't go to boarding school. So for those that went to boarding school, they will tell you that those seniors that they beat, those juniors that they beat very well, they slap their head. The moment they become senior, ah, they become terror. They become terror. The same thing, so it, 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 it becomes, it, it's a right. No, no, it's a right. Uh -uh. They took my provision. I slept under the bunker or the bed. Ah, uh, no. Come on, come on, sit here. Why? <laughs> it was done to them. It was what? It was done to them. So it's unfair. It's really unfair. For you, you not tell them, no, don't do this to someone else. No! <laughs> I must do it. That's how it is. So, but, but you must first forgive those that have wronged you. And before you can escape and be free. From the story of my sister here that sent, she got to a stage whereby she was looking for love. And someone came and just spoke differently from the, and, and, and she fell. She fell and the next thing she found out that the man was a married, the guy was a married man. And discovered that she's been damaged the second time. Or not the second time, they damaged. No, so now, Men that came aggressive, bad, and she was running, she was fighting them. But one that came later at the end uh, and came with calmness and uh, beauty and nice, was nice. Because she's been looking for affection. She just wants to be loved. So she, so she was taken advantage of. I, I know as I'm speaking, as I'm, as I'm speaking, as, as I'm speaking to you now, I know she's listening to me, and I'm saying to you that the God that we serve is a restorer. Yeah. Yes. Because you know, when when I was reading, my heart was bleeding because when 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 you stopped, you stopped at a place of no hope. But I'm saying to you today that hope. Is restored for you. That all that you have gone through, all that you have gone through, God with his love is going to turn them around. Wipe all your death. His blood is able to wash no matter how dirty the past is and give you a brand new beginning. You are the image of God and after his likeness. And upon your life is the seal of the favor of God. 
Bible says, it says, even if your nursing mother forgot you, abandoned you, it says, he will never for, abandon you. He loves you. And I assure you one thing. There is someone God has placed in your way that will show you the true love of, from the heart of God. You don't need, you don't need, see, you don't need, you don't, you don't need the applause of men. Not do you need a plot of things. God's love is, is constant. And everything you want is in him. People of God, can, can, can you just do me one thing? Just stretch, your, just stretch forth your hand forward. Because it's a bold step you have taken to open your heart. And I know that God is healing you right now. We stay for our hand in agreement that any, everywhere you are bleeding in your heart, in agreement as a church, we pray for you that the Lord Almighty will heal your wounds. I pray for you that the love that no man can give to you, that love that no father, no mother can give to you, that the Almighty God will shower you with, with his eternal love. That the agape love, the unconditional love of God will, will, will be released upon you. Amen. I pray that Jesus himself will reveal himself to you. In the name of Jesus. And every past, I pray that the blood of Jesus blow them out. Amen. And your pain, God will turn to your gains. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. There's a man... I can't, I, I can't remember his name. He, 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 he's deformed. He has no limb. He has no hand. That's disadvantaged. But you see, the legs he didn't have, the hands he didn't have, couldn't stop him. The man so motivated himself by the word of God that I saw a particular clip the man was going for a conference in a country. And at the airport, at the airport, crowd was waiting for him. Crowd. He's not a president, too. He's not a government official. Crowd was waiting for this man. And I said, wow. What the enemy had thought was to make him stranded. God turned it around and made it his story that the world wants to hear. I'm saying to someone today, everything that the enemy had thrown at you, the stones he has thrown in your path, the, 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 rub, the things he has put, thrown to, to cause you to fall, they all will become your stepping stone in the name of Jesus. So they will become your what? Your stepping stone in the name of Jesus. I had a story, I don't know if, if, it's, if it, I don't know if it's a true story or it's an, an analogy of uh, maybe an animal that fell into a hole by mistake. And some people said they want to bury it. So I said, they can't, they, can't, they can't help him out. Said, let's, bury, let's bury the animal. So, so they, would, they, would, they would scoop some sand and pour on him, bury him alive. So when they pour the sand on him, he will shake his body and the sand will fill it. So I said, the guy doesn't want to go. They'll pour another sand. He will shake his body and he will step on this sand. But before long, the, <laughs> the animal was out. Because everything they were, steps, they were throwing to him, they were helping him. You, you, you understand? <laughs> they thought they, they thought they wanted to bury him. They were bringing him out of his pits. Hallelujah. Everything that the enemy is throwing at you, your past, throwing at you, in, the mistakes you have made, I decree everything is, it will turn around to be your way of escape. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. An area that we will speak about is, is the area of guilt. But not today. The things that the enemy uses to hold people down. When, 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 when you have been wrongly used or abused, sometimes the enemy wants to throw the card of guilt. 
I decree, any man or woman at the sound of my voice that is feeling guilty for the things he did not put on himself, I pray the mercy of God pulls you out from that bondage in the name of Jesus. As I said earlier, it's not your fault and you are not permitted to take blame. You are not permitted to take blame. Hey, you are not permitted to do what? To take blame. You are not permitted to take blame. And every adverse effect that those experiences has cost you, I pray for you. I pray for you. I pray for you. That death so sometimes these experiences make people feel dirty. You know, it makes them feel dirty. Just feel they, they, they feel they feel not, not clean anymore. Or that God would not accept them or, or love them like he 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 loved them before. They've done something and that they can't they can't they can't see themselves as 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 as, as, as his bride. Why? Because of their experiences. But I'm, I'm here to let you know one thing. That God's love is unconditional. It's unconditional. It's unconditional. It's un Even if you, 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 you made a mistake or you, or you, maybe, I don't know, it's possible that you might, be, you might have just made an error or Pass a wrong, a wrong impression or, or wrong something. Now you, you can say, ah, maybe I, ah, I think I have fought in this area. I, I did this. I shouldn't have done that. Even at that, you are not the criminal. You're not the one that is to be blamed. And God is not blaming you. Hallelujah. Our God is what? A merciful God. Is a merciful God. Wait, see, where he's taking you to is more important to him, to where you have, where you have come, where you're coming from. And everything you have experienced, God has a plan to use it, to use it to bring glory to God. There's, there's a preacher, Joyce Meyer, fantastic woman. When she's speaking, you see, in a, you see, at a time when I see our, our, our programs, I, I kept wondering, ah, what is this? this is my just, my, just put your hands in the pocket, I just be walking around, and just, you know, be talking, and, just be just here, and I see thousands of people, I'm trying to wonder, what are they looking for? She's not putting any blind eye raising in the dead. What are they looking for? Crowd all over, and she, and she does it in different cities of the world, it's different cities, not just one place, and everywhere, cities are sold out. Let's go have something. What's she telling them? A pain. Amen? It's a pain. She will tell you, I was abused by my father. You know? That abuse made her to run from home. She was rebellious. Because she was looking for love everywhere. As a teenager, she got married and had a, and had a child. And because, but when she got married, she, 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 as a teenager, she, that's, that, that emptiness was still there. She was satisfied. She got, she got divorced. See, until she met God, and God sent her the man that he would use to, to restore her back. See, it's, a, it's always a process. And see, when she talks about, of her story, she will, she will also refer to her, when she fights the man, you know, because of, you know, she, because those... Her father, that other man, this man, but God gave her a man that was made. The man will not die. You know that kind of thing. <laughs> the guy will not die. A, a blessing to her life that gave her all the support she wants to do everything. And that's how she's doing her ministry now. Why? From her pain. See, when, see, when you talk from your pain, you're not just, you're not just talking on, this, on the surface. You know, you are talking from experience. And when they can see that if you have gone through this and you came out, someone somewhere is saying, I'm coming out. Amen? Amen. Just because of you. That's what I'm telling you. Whatever you are going through, 
The one that is behind you is, is, is the almighty. And he will do anything to make sure you come out of that situation. Don't remain in depression. Don't remain wounded. There's healing for you. Don't remain in regrets. Don't remain in the pain. Why? The all-sufficient God has something better for you. Hallelujah. So you, you, have to, you have to believe that God is on my side. And I want to just speak to someone here. You've heard what, what we're saying. It's, 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 it's sometimes it's not, it, it's not about it's not motivation. It's not about, yes, I can do it. Yes, I can No, 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 no. It is God helping you, helping us. Is there, as I'm speaking here, it is God that has helped me. There are things I've been through that if not for his grace, I will not be standing here. So the, and that same grace is available for you. But that grace comes through a person. That person's name is called Jesus Christ. It's called Jesus Christ. He's the, he's, see, Jesus went through everything you can ever go through and much more. And he went through them because of you. So when you, see, that's why his Bible says he, he, he feels your pain. He feels your emotions. He knows when you cry because he too, he wept. He understands grief. He understands disappointment. He understands betrayal. He, he understands when, when, when people gang up against you and they, they say negative things to you. He, he, he knows what rejection means. That's why he's giving you his love and he's taking your pain away from you. All you need to do is to accept him. Embrace the love he has for you. Accept, I accept your blessing. I accept your help. I accept your healing. If you are online or you are here in this service and you know that you need Jesus in your life, you need him to fill your heart, you need him to become your Lord and your Savior, you need him to take your body away, and you want to receive your, the peace and the love that he has in your heart. You want to feel the pure love of God. The love that is not, that has no, no, no guilt. You know, the love that is pure. That love that is pure, unquestionable. The love of Jesus Christ. Just put your heart on your chest. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my pain. I surrender my heart, my disappointments, my past. Jesus, come into my heart. Come and be my Lord and my Savior. I need you. I need you. Heal my wounds. Save me. Give me a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.